Welcome back, atheists, heathens, infidels and non-believers. Last time we talked about the assertion of Allah's mercy and competence over all things. We also talked about how Allah makes disbelievers to hide from them so they cannot prove his existence or find their way back to the path. Just so he can burn them in the eternal fires of the afterlife because he's all-encompassing and merciful. We ended our talk with a challenge to disbelievers to write a shura, so I hope all you disbelievers did their homework and handed in poetic masterpieces to, to disprove Allah and what he shared with Muhammad. But if you do not, and you will never be able to, then fear the fire, whose fuel is men and stones, prepared for the disbelievers. Sorry, maybe I should have told you sooner that anyone who can't do the homework will be punished. I'll do a separate series reading out listeners' entries, so please leave some in the comments. Let's get back to the straight path and see what we can learn this week. And give good tidings to those who believe and do righteous deeds, that they will have gardens in paradise beneath which rivers flow. Whenever they are provided with a provision of fruit, therefrom they will say, This is what we were provided with before, and it is given to them in likeness, and they will have therein purified spouses, and they will abide therein eternally. Believe and you can live eternally in the afterlife eating fruit with your purified wives. Does that mean virgins? And do they get purified each day of eternity? You made me had to get that in there. Indeed, Allah is not timid to present an example, that of a mosquito, or what is smaller than it. And those who have believed know that it is the truth from their Lord. But as for those who disbelieve, they say, what did Allah intend by this as an example? He misleads many thereby and guides many thereby and he misleads not except the definitely disobedient who break the covenant of Allah after contracting it and sever that which Allah has ordered to be joined and cause corruption on earth it is those who are the losers great some evidence that we have to accept without question why can't we ask what is intended by the example of a mosquito? Or what is smaller, let's say a virus? What is the point? How can you disbelieve in Allah when you were lifeless and he brought you to life? Then he will cause you to die, then he will bring you back to life, and then to him you will be returned. Just believe because Allah made you and he can kill you and throw you in the eternal fires of the afterlife. It is he who created for you all of that which is on the earth. Then he directed himself to the heaven, his being above all creation, and made them seven heavens and he is knowing of all things. Believe because he made everything on earth before going to heaven and then making seven heavens for somebody. So who did he make them for? And mention, O Muhammad, when your Lord said to the angels, Indeed I will make upon the earth a successive authority. They said, Will you place upon it one who causes corruption therein and sheds blood? 
while we declare your praise and sanctify you? Alice said, Indeed, I know that which you do not know. Maybe it was for the angels, who are allowed to question Allah, because when he says that he'll put a government or authority onto the earth, they ask him, will he also put someone to corrupt and kill, whilst they're singing his praises? To which Allah responds, you don't know if I did. And he taught Adam the names, all of them. Then he showed them to the angels and said, Inform me of the names of these, if you are truthful. They said, Exalted are you, we have no knowledge except what you have taught us. Indeed, it is you who is the knowing, the wise. So he teaches Adam the names of everything, and asks the angels to tell him what their names are, if they are truthful. Yeah, I told Adam what everything is called, so uh, can you tell me what I told him? They reply, we only know what you teach us, you are the know-it-all. He said, O oh, Adam, inform them of their names, and when he had informed them of their names, he said, Did I not tell you that I know the unseen aspects of the heavens and the earth? And I know what you reveal and what you have concealed. So he gets Adam to teach him. Yeah, Adam, I taught you what everything's called. And I can't be asked to do it again, so uh, you do it. After which he asks, didn't I tell you that I know the unseen aspects of the heavens and the earth? And I know what you have said and what you have hidden. Well, no. Adam told them all the names of the things. There's no mention of the unseen being named or how they work. He just told them about some rocks, plants and animals. And mention when we said to the angels, prostrate before Adam. So they prostrated, except for Iblis. He refused and was arrogant and became of the disbelievers. Okay, so the angels have to get the word of Allah through Adam, accept it as the truth of all things, and prostrate before him. Why are the angels lower ranked? They are supposed to constantly sing Allah's praises for all time. Allah teaches Adam who gets to live in paradise eating fruit but they do because they have no free will. And Iblis, or Satan, who is not an angel, he's a jinn or genie, as they're known in the West. Why was he there? Unless he was ranked amongst the angels. He refused to prostrate to Adam and becomes the first disbeliever. At the moment, he is looking like a scapegoat. Why else would Allah create him if he knows how the story ends? And we said, O oh Adam, dwell you and your wife in paradise and eat therefrom in ease and abundance from wherever you will. But do not approach this tree lest you be among the wrongdoers. But Satan caused them to slip out of it and remove them from that condition in which they had been and we said go down all of you as enemies to one another and you will have upon the earth a place of settlement and provision for a time. Adam can go wherever he wants just as long as he doesn't go near God's tree but Satan causes Adam and Eve to slip out of the condition of not being near the tree so Allah sends them to earth to be enemies to each other, but they are still getting given fruit. This begs the question, where was Eden? In heaven or on earth? I thought Allah made the earth for Adam, but here it's a punishment. And with that, we'll call it a day. This week we have found out that we must believe in Allah because he made us and he can kill us. 
He puts forth a mosquito as proof of his existence. We also see the hierarchy that Allah sets up, which causes Iblis and the rest of the jinn to reject the Quran and the teachings of Muhammad. So far, the second shura of the Quran has been mostly about disbelievers and how Allah made them to be punished. Now we're starting to get some of the mythology, but still no sign of the straight path. Come back next week and we'll continue looking for it. If you like this episode, please click the like button, subscribe and share. And don't forget to leave your shura in the comments. Until next time, goodbye all.